Nestled in southeastern California, about 50 miles south of Las Vegas, lies a place of great economic importance, geological intrigue, and abundant mineral resources, the Mountain Pass Rare Earth Element Mine. This unique locality boasts a rich deposit of vital metals, sought after for their electrochemical properties and used in a wide range of electronic, medical, and industrial applications. These rare earth elements are critical components to an array of devices, such as smartphones, computers, electric vehicles, and renewable energy technologies, including wind turbines and solar panels. Currently, this mine is the only active rare earth mine in the United States. Despite this, Mountain Pass is quite well endowed. It produces 15.8% of the entire world's rare earth element supply, underscoring its crucial role in the economy. But what exactly are rare earth elements? What chemical properties do they have that make them so critical to such a wide range of industries? What is the geology of these metals and of the Mountain Pass mine? And what's their role in the global economy? We're going to answer all of that and more in today's episode of Solomon's Outdoor Adventures, so sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride. Let's do it! Rare earth elements are a group of 17 metals, consisting of scandium, yttrium, and the lanthanides. These rare earth elements are organized together in this group because of similar chemical properties and characteristics. They're all soft, ductile, conductive, magnetic, and malleable metals that rapidly oxidize in air. In nature, they are stable as trivalent cations, meaning they are found with a 3 plus charge due to a loss of 3 electrons from their outermost shells. As such, they are great conductors of electricity, as their positive charge allows them to move freely and carry electric currents. The magnetism of rare earths is one of their hallmark characteristics that make them so useful in electronics. Rare earth elements such as neodymium are so powerfully magnetic because their electron configuration contains numerous unpaired electrons in their 4f orbitals. This allows them to store large amounts of magnetic energy, giving them a very high magnetic moment. Magnetic moment is defined as a vector quantity of magnetic strength and orientation, and the high magnetic moment of neodymium and other rare earths produces strong magnetic fields as the spin of electrons aligns. In fact, a neodymium magnet is roughly 18 times more powerful than an iron magnet. Rare earth magnets are used in electronics because they are the strongest types of magnets available, and they are ideal for use in applications where high magnetic force is required in a compact space, such as wind turbine generators, computer hard drives, medical imaging equipment, and electric vehicle motors. The most commonly used rare earth magnet is the neodymium iron boron magnet. Though we just learned that rare earth elements are highly similar in most respects, these elements are different in one key aspect. They have a high variance in ionic radii. The quote light rare earth elements, lanthanum to gadolinium, have large ionic radii, while the heavy rare earth elements, terbium to lutetium, have smaller ionic radii. In chemistry, ionic radius is the measure of an atom's ion in a crystal lattice. This radius is basically the distance from the atom's nucleus to its outermost electrons. This is important because elements with similar ionic radii can substitute for other elements and minerals, and this is exactly how rare earth elements are deposited. These metals can substitute themselves in a vast array of different minerals, but by and large they most commonly substitute themselves in phosphates and carbonates. This is exemplified by the mineral bastnasite. Lanthanum and cerium in particular have ionic radii that is almost identical to calcium, thus they easily substitute and carbonate in rare earth rich systems, forming bastnasite. Bastnasite has an almost identical crystal structure to calcite. Fluorine and or hydroxide is added to this mineral due to the 3 plus charge of cerium and lanthanum. Carbonate has a 2 minus charge, so a monovalent anion like fluorine or hydroxide is needed to balance the mineral out. Fluorine and hydroxide also act as conduits that transport cerium, lanthanum, neodymium, and other light rare earth element molecules in hydrothermal and magmatic systems. Monazite is another mineral where rare earths substitute for calcium. Rather than being a calcium phosphate, it's a cerium phosphate, and it often contains small amounts of other light rare earth elements, as well as yttrium and thorium. Despite their name, rare earth elements are not all that rare. In fact, cerium is the 25th most abundant element in Earth's crust, making it more common than copper. 
The least common rare earth element is promethium. It's highly radioactive, with a half-life of 2.62 years, and there's never more than 500 to 600 grams of it in Earth's crust at any given time, so it's never really mentioned in terms of rare earth mining. It's only formed naturally by very rare spontaneous fission of uranium-238. Anyways, even the least crustal abundant economic rare earth, thulium, is still six times more abundant in Earth's crust than silver is. These elements are present in trace amounts pretty much everywhere, but they rarely deposit in concentrated amounts, and this is due to the chemical properties that we just touched on. Like all metals, rare earth elements are brought to and deposited in the earth's crust by tectonic and magmatic processes, requiring volcanism to transport them from the molten mantle into the crust. Their high magnetism and large ionic radii make them incompatible with the crystal lattices of the vast majority of rock-forming igneous minerals, so they tend to just float around the melt in highly minute quantities, as they can't really bond or be incorporated into many minerals and cannot easily concentrate. They're basically like a guy that can't find a date. They can only concentrate in a select few rare types of igneous deposits, including carbonatite and pegmatite deposits. As we know now, light rare earths such as cerium and lanthanum have a propensity to substitute for elements such as calcium, and carbonatites are calcium-rich igneous deposits, defined as igneous systems containing over 50% carbonate minerals. Thus, these rare earths can concentrate in the abundant carbonate minerals of carbonatite deposits, and that is exactly what we see at the Mountain Pass rare earth mine. Now you might be wondering why carbonate sedimentary rocks such as limestone and dolostone don't have concentrated amounts of rare earth elements, and the reason for this is that hydrothermal fluids and high temperatures are required to alter the crystal lattice of minerals in a melt sufficiently to form rare earth minerals, and that can really only be achieved in igneous systems. Sedimentary systems just don't have the temperature needed to form minerals such as bastnasite and monazite. One last aspect of the geochemistry of rare earth elements is that the compounds that they are found in are often radioactive. This isn't due to the rare earths themselves, as the vast majority of them are not radioactive. Rather, it's due to the presence of thorium and uranium in the minerals that form when rare earths are concentrated. This is again due to the ionic radii. Thorium and uranium have strikingly similar ionic radii to light rare earths and heavy rare earths, respectively, so they readily concentrate with these rare earth elements. Weakly radioactive signals from carbonatites and pegmatites have actually been good indicators of the presence of rare earth elements and have been used by exploration geologists to assist in locating these deposits. So you can tell we're near this rare earth element deposit because the background radiation is pretty high at about 0.25 microsieverts per hour. That is pretty high background radiation and that's because all the ore at the Mountain Pass mine is radioactive. Yeah, look at that. We're about one microsievert per hour. Just want to let you guys know that we are on public property right now. We are downstream from the mine in this little wash. So there's a lot of ore around here. The deposit at Mountain Pass is a carbonatite deposit that dates back to the Proterozoic Eon, roughly 1.4 billion years ago, and it's located in southeastern California's Clark Mountains. This carbonatite intruded 1.7 billion year old gneiss and originated in the upper part of Earth's mantle. Carbonatites are the coolest lavas, and they are almost exclusive to continental rift related tectonic processes. Though rare, there is actually one active carbonatite volcano today. Old Doinho Lengai in Tanzania is an active carbonatite volcano, erupting lava that is highly enriched in rare earth elements, particularly in cerium, lanthanum, and praseodymium. It's actually pretty trippy, dude. The specific ore body at Mountain Pass is known as the Sulfide Queen Carbonate Body, and it's one of the largest rare earth element deposits on the planet. The sulfide queen carbonatite complex consists of eight plugs of igneous rock, elongated in northwest fashion and dipping roughly 50 degrees towards the southwest. These plugs are between 100 and 2,000 feet thick. Over 200 northwest trending dikes of carbonatite are also present, associated with the sulfide queen ore body. The main ore mineral here is bastnasite, a rare earth bearing fluorocarbonate but monazites and rare earth bearing apatites are also present. The bastnasite here is red and forms microcrystalline masses in the aforementioned carbonatite. 
This vast nasite is weakly radioactive, due largely to the presence of thorium within the mineral. Due to its geology, Mountain Pass produces light rare earths, including cerium, lanthanum, neodymium, praseodymium, as well as low quantities of samarium, gadolinium, and europium. Other unspecified rare earth elements are also produced in very low quantities. As aforementioned, Mountain Pass is the only active rare earth element mine in the United States, and its economic value cannot be overstated. It produced 42,000 tons of ore in 2022, 43,000 in 2023, and remains stable in producing ore today, accounting for roughly 15.8% of the entire world's rare earth element production. MP Materials owns the mine, and according to their technical report, their proven resources are about 215,000 metric tons of ore at a grade of 9.0% rare earth oxide in their ore. Their probable resources are 14,431,568 metric tons of ore at a 7.8% rare earth oxide grade. This probable resource figure is derived from geological modeling of the sulfide queen ore body. A different company report approximates Mountain Pass to have a mine life of 35 years, as of 2022. Though Mountain Pass produces 15.8% of the world's rare earth elements, China has an iron, or perhaps more appropriately, a neodymium grip on the rare earth industry, producing over 60% and processing roughly 90% of the world's rare earth elements. In fact, Mountain Pass's ore is processed in China. Despite this, China only contains 36% of the world's rare earth element deposits, mainly in the provinces of Inner Mongolia, Sichuan, Fujian, Jiangxi, Guangdong, and Shandong. So if China only has roughly one-third of these deposits, why are they leading the world in rare earth production and processing by a mile? The answer to this is due to China's policies. It's no secret that they have pretty much zero environmental regulations and utilize some questionable labor policies to say the least. Rare earth element mining is actually pretty expensive and has several negative environmental impacts, including the by-production of toxic, radioactive waste that has the potential to leach into the water tables of surrounding areas while processing the ore. Addressing these environmental concerns and ensuring that they do not occur is an expensive process, on top of mining the material. Due to environmental concerns, permitting is a rather difficult issue in the West, but China doesn't have that hoop to jump through. Because, in simple terms, China doesn't give a f they lead the world by far in this sector of environmentally challenging mining and processing. I don't really want to get political, as that's not the scope of this channel, but I'll say this. The whole economic issue of rare earth element mining and production is highly complex and is composed of interesting players on all sides. Mining is often seen as a boogeyman, but the reality is this. If we want to stop burning fossil fuels, we need to produce more metals, and rare earth elements are some of the most critical metals to decarbonization, as we just learned about their application to renewable energy and electric vehicles. Geologically speaking, it's not like the US and other western countries are lacking in rare earth deposits. China may contain 36% of the world's rare earth deposits, but the US, Canada, and Australia combined contain 26% of them, not too far behind. This number may actually be higher, as exploration geologists are working to find more deposits and may very well find several new ones in the near future. This brings me back to the Mountain Pass rare earth mine. As we just learned, it's the only active rare earth element mine in the United States, and produced about 43,000 tons of ore in 2023, but it's not the only rare earth deposit in the country. Other deposits have been found in Nevada, Wyoming, Idaho, Alaska, Colorado, Nebraska, Missouri, Virginia, and New York, and the outlook on some of these deposits looks pretty good in terms of mining feasibility. Increasing rare earth production in the West is not that far-fetched, and if done right, could increase economic prosperity and bring an influx of jobs here, while producing our own homegrown, or I guess home mined, goods. And despite the environmental hurdles, we could process these goods without vastly destroying our environment. It's really just a matter of adhering to environmental laws and investing into this industry. In summary, rare earth elements are an interesting and unique group of metals, prized for their chemical properties that allow them to be utilized in a litany of critical electronic devices. 
China dominates the rare earth industry, but new deposits are constantly being discovered in the Western sphere, including in the United States, Canada, and Australia. Gaining independence from China in this economic sector is feasible, as the Mountain Pass Rare Earth Mine in California produces roughly 42,500 tons of ore annually, accounting for over 15% of the entire world's rare earth production. Thank you for watching this installment of Solomon's Outdoor Adventures. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing to my channel if you haven't already, as it really helps me out and especially helps me to get new content to y'all. I will be posting a video every Sunday evening at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time for the rest of 2025, so be sure to keep it locked in to my channel if you like it. Thanks again, y'all, and as always, peace! Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Solomon's Outdoor Adventures. If you enjoy content like this, please like the video and subscribe to the channel, and check out some of our other adventures right here. As always guys, thanks again and peace!